Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about phosphorus. Specifically about the abundance or lack of phosphorus in our galaxy and our universe. And more specifically about a new discovery that seems to indicate that phosphorus might actually be one of those elements absent from other exoplanets and other star systems. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this uh, relatively recent research from, I think it was April uh, of 2018, showed that um, phosphorus, which is quite a common element right here on Earth, may actually not be as common in other star systems. Now, let's actually briefly talk about what phosphorus is. For one, phosphorus is actually known as the so-called schnapps. It's one of the CHNOPS elements that are absolutely crucial for life on Earth. As a matter of fact, all of these elements are present in quite an abundance in various types of molecules that are often related to life. So P, which is phosphorus, is actually part of the phosphate group, which is inside the uh, things like cell walls, uh, things like ATP, which is your, um, uh, something that produces energy inside your cells, and of course, um, inside the actual uh, DNA itself. It actually keeps DNA together. So it is absolutely and totally crucial for any kind of life on our planet. And so uh, some of the scientists from the Cardiff University in the UK were actually looking at various supernova in our sky. And uh, specifically the uh, astronomer by the name of Phil uh, Sagan actually uh, kept observing or trying to find differences between the infamous Crab Nebula, which is a nebula formed by a supernova that happened several thousand years ago, uh, this is what it kind of looks like in a Space Engine. Uh, I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds once we get there. This is kind of what it is. So he was looking at this nebula and comparing it to another nebula called uh, Cassiopeia A. And he discovered something really, really interesting and something really unusual. Looking at this nebula, he could see a spectrum of uh, gas that seemed to differ dramatically from the one in Cassiopeia. And specifically what he discovered is that the uh, spectrum for Cassiopeia had quite a lot of phosphorus in it. As a matter of fact, it was uh, a lot more than he could see anywhere else. Whereas the spectrum for uh, Crab Nebula had a lot of iron, but almost no phosphorus at all. As a matter of fact, phosphorus here was practically in the background level. And um, this suggested one thing. This actually suggested that, first of all, unlike we previously thought, phosphorus may not be as abundant in the galaxy, or I guess in our universe, as we thought. Phosphorus is one of those elements that actually is formed during a supernova. So basically when a star explodes, um, the energy generated and the uh, neutrinos released basically combine various elements and create heavier elements, and phosphorus is one of those things. But we thought that phosphorus is basically all over the place in our galaxy. We actually assumed for the longest time that every single nebula you see here, including um, this right here, which is the biggest we see in the sky, a cold Carina nebula, would have a lot of phosphorus. But turns out that maybe we could have been wrong. We need to actually take a look at a lot more of these nebulae and study them in a lot more detail, but it seems that pretty much um, only the nebula produced by supermassive stars have a lot of phosphorus. So the conclusion that the scientists came to was that a star that was extremely massive, more massive than an average star that basically exploded uh, and produced a very, very large supernova would actually have a lot of phosphorus there. However, a smaller star like the one that produced much smaller Crab Nebula would actually most likely not have enough mass or enough energy to produce much phosphorus. And thus, um, I guess you can conclude from this, is that all the stars that will be formed in this vicinity in the future will most likely not have a lot of phosphorus in them. And once again, thus, it's probable that no uh, life as we know it would be able to form there because there will just not be enough P in there, not enough ph phosphorus. Uh, you, would, you might be able to have other elements like carbon, um, hydrogen, oxygen, maybe even sulfur, nitrogen, 
but without phosphorus, uh, you would not be able to produce DNA molecules, at least uh, for the type of life that we're used to here on Earth. Now, this research is actually extremely interesting because this kind of suggests that uh, the infamous Drake equation just got a completely new variable in it, specifically the chemical variable. So it might actually depend on the kind of a supernova that the current planet and current star were formed from. So our Earth uh, was most likely uh, formed from a supernova of an extremely massive star, a star that is a lot more rare than a typical supernova. And so in that sense, our Earth and of course our Sun are once again a lot more unique than we kind of gave them credit for. Well, that's all we kind of know about this type of a supernova and, I guess, the distribution of phosphorus for now. But what this actually suggests is that we need to actually now start looking for a lot of these different um, molecules that are usually related to life out there in the galaxy and try to map out uh, some of the areas that might actually be good for life. In other words, uh, areas where life may have formed and also areas where life may not be possible because there's just no elements that we think are required for life. And for now, we definitely looked at phosphorus and we need to look at it a little bit more. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video. For now, that's all we know. And hopefully in the future research, we'll be able to find a lot more locations with tremendous amounts of phosphorus or very, very little phosphorus. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.